All right, step three, the final step. Decide on whether to use free cash flow to the firm or free cash flow to equity. So let's go through and look at what you're going to learn. You're going to understand free cash flow to equity and how it differs from free cash flow to the firm and dividend discount model. You're going to know the cases when free cash flow to equity is a superior valuation method to compared to free cash flow to the firm. So let's first review free cash flow to the firm. And we know that this is cash flow that is free to be dispersed to investors and lenders. Free cash flow to equity is the amount that's available only to equity holders or investors. So when we use free cash flow to equity, well, you use it when a company doesn't pay dividends or when dividends differ significantly from free cash flow to equity. And in other words, in that case, the company is building up cash rather than paying it out. And you also use it when you have control of a company, like you could increase or otherwise change the dividend policy. So what's the difference with DDM? Well, for dividend discount model, it assumes that the cash flow that is not paid out is accumulated as cash in the balance sheet. Free cash flow to equity assumes that all cash is paid out as dividend. So in that sense, it's a theoretical uh, number rather than a practical number. The practical number is the amount that's being paid out. The free cash flow equity shows what's the potential that could be paid out. So the process to derive free cash flow to the firm and free cash flow to equity is similar. Recall from previous lesson how we calculated cash no pat. Cash no pat is equal to EBIT times one minus the tax rate plus the depreciation amount. So here we can look at Fastenal. And we can calculate the free cash flow to the firm on one side and the free cash flow to equity on the other. And the fact is, is that the process is exactly the same. We're going to calculate these side by side to make sure that you understand them. So <clears throat> remember that when calculating free cash flow to firm, interest expenses have not been yet been subtracted from EBIT, right? These are a claim to debt holders and we want to calculate the cash flow available to both. But free cash flow to equity on the other hand, only represents the amount of cash available to equity holders. Hence, for free cash flow to equity, we reduce the cash NOPAT by interest that must be paid to lenders first before it could be available to equity holders. So the difference you can see on the right side, free cash flow to equity, we're now going to reduce the cash NOPAT by the interest expense after tax. So for free cash flow firm, we do not deduct interest expenses as we want to know the cash available that we could distribute to both equity holders and debt holders. So next, we make an adjustment for networking capital. This step is the same for both. And here we can see the exact same for both. And then we want to deduct CapEx and we consider, of course, maintenance and growth CapEx. And we deduct CapEx, but again, this is the same for both. So we now derive the free cash flow to the firm, but how about the free cash flow to equity? You might have noticed that we took all steps to derive that free cash flow to the firm. It's done. However, for the free cash flow to equity, we make one final adjustment. We add back the net borrowings. And that's what you can see at the bottom right. There is the level of net increase or decrease in debt. So since free cash flow to the firm is a total cash flow available to both debt and equity holders, you would not add back the debt. So now it's time to check your forecast. So you just go to the discount value sheet as the calculation for free cash flow to equity is almost the same as free cash flow to the firm. We only need to check two further items. That's the expense and debt. So uh, there is the expense and also the net borrowings. So here we can see those adjustments that need to be made and we can get to our free cash flow to equity. So Fastenal doesn't carry a lot of debt, so free cash flow to equity is very close to free cash flow to the firm. But this is not always the case. All right, what you've learned. Well, free cash flow to the firm is a measure of cash flow available to both shareholders and lenders, while free cash flow to equity is the cash flow available only to shareholders. So you want to use free cash flow to equity when a company doesn't pay dividends or dividends differ significantly from the free cash flow to equity and you can't control the dividend policy. Also, dividend discount model assumes cash flow that is not paid out is accumulated as cash in the balance sheet, <coughs> while free cash flow to equity assumes that all excess cash is paid out as dividend. 
When calculating free cash flow to the firm, use EBIT because it includes what is available to pay both creditors, creditors and shareholders. And since free cash flow to equity only re represents the cash available to equity holders, we reduce the cash NOFAT, NOPAT by interest expense that must first be paid to lenders. Also, with free cash flow to equity, we add back the net borrowings since that cash is available to shareholders. Woo! Congratulations, you've made it to the end of this section and the, the made it to the end of this lesson and this section. So what's next? You're going to set reasonable assumptions for the discount rate applied to calculate the present value. I'll see you there. And this whole course that you've created and the fact that I can go back to this, I, it just gives me so much confidence. Um, so I'm so grateful, Andrew. Really, mm. I really am.